Hello, good morning everyone. Welcome to Kapetira. I uh, hope that you are bright and you are awake this morning. Good morning to you. Uh, remember, don't forget to greet uh, the people closest to you. A good morning. No, the, these are the days where a lot of days are just bad, and sometimes you know, just that blessing, a good morning, can just uh, kickstart somebody's day on the right way. So I hope you have your coffee with you. Um, pray that you're ready. Study the word of the Lord. Before we do that, let's join our hearts in prayer. Father, we thank you for this brand new morning that you have given us. Father, we thank you because uh, every morning is good if you are in it. Father, we just commit to you our time together in your word. Pray that you would sanctify this time, open our hearts and our minds to, to understand your word, Lord, and uh, to live by it, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You guys remember back in the 90s, there was this... Uh, uh, famous TV sitcom here in Manila and here in the Philippines uh, called Home Along the Riles. Alala niyo pa yan, Home Along the Riles, si, ano, si Dolphy ang, uh, ang bida. No? He's, he's the lead actor. Um, Home Along the Riles, I, the reason why I mentioned that is because uh, ever since I moved to Makati, it seems like I've been living Home Along the Riles. Uh, first time I moved here, um, I, I had a, I lived in a condominium by uh, by the Buddhi uh, PNR station and then Pam during that time was also living in uh, San Antonio village also behind the PNR station directly behind the PNR station finally got married we're living in this house now uh, so we I moved from PNR Buendia station and now I am in PNR Vito Cruz station directly just behind again directly behind the PNR station and then um, if the Lord will, sometime soon, Pam and I would be moving again. Uh, we'll be moving to another place and uh, this time it will be in PNR Pasong Tamo Station. So all this time we've been transferring from uh, one train station to the next. Uh, so home along the Riles kami. Um, the reason why I mention that is because every morning, no, for the longest time, uh, I would hear the train. And when I first moved here, uh, when I was living in uh, Buendia, Every time I would hear the train, it feels like the train would actually enter in my unit and uh, the, the, the windows and the walls would shake. And the first time I, I slept there, I couldn't sleep because of all the, the train noise huh, in the evening and then in the morning. And when I moved here, it got a little bit better. I got accustomed to it here in Marmol. But then, uh, but then I, I just hear it. A while ago, I heard it again. I, I, I haven't heard it for the longest time because of the quarantine but a while ago i heard it again but something peculiar happened because a while ago when when uh, when the train honked its horn it it for some reason sounded really louder to me than it used to and i realized for for this uh, about mga siguro five years of me staying here in makati um i, I i've grown accustomed to the sound of the train so that I've noticed that I was not bothered by it as I was before uh, when I first moved. No? And I think the reason behind that is because I became desensitized to the sound of the train. So I became accustomed to it. But now because of the quarantine, I haven't heard it for a while. So when, when the train honk its horn again, maybe they're testing it or making sure it's still functioning. I feel it and I heard it very loud again. Today we're going to talk about what happens when we become desensitized uh, in our hearts. Our verse for today is in Habakkuk chapter 2 verses 15 to 16. Today I will be reading from the New Living Translation. Again, Habakkuk chapter 2 verses 15 and 16. Let me read it to you. It says, What sorrow awaits you who make your neighbors drunk? You force your cup on them so you can gloat over their shameful nakedness. But soon it will be your turn to be disgraced. Come, drink and be exposed. Drink from the cup of the Lord's judgment and all your glory will be turned into shame. And so this is God's woe uh, to the kingdom of Babylon. And again, I want to encourage you in a negative way. One of the bad things that the kingdom of Babylon have done is they, um, you know, remember they were sacking uh, one nation after the other, where they're staking over, they were very brutal. But one thing that they did is they, they have this uh, desensitizing entertainment that was being, um, being produced in these nations that they were um, subjugating, no? And the thing that they're doing here is that they're causing other people to be drunk, no? So, so if you're drunk, 
you don't realize the suffering that you're going through it, it kind of numbs you like hearing the trains uh, horn every single day you get accustomed to it so that you don't get annoyed anymore and the jolt and the uh, and the loudness is not is as uh, it's not as unbearable as it once was and uh, the lord looks down upon that and he says you know that's not a good thing that you would desensitize people you would desensitize your heart from seeing oppression and injustice and uh, thinking about that reflecting about that sometimes we feel parang the need to be desensitized and to numb ourselves from just from all the things that are going on in our society specifically now there's so much unrest in the world um the covid virus here in the philippines and just the the general community quarantine and the woes that comes along with it the commute is horrible right now in the states the riots and the looting in hong kong the same thing going on and sometimes so in, in order to function we make ourselves numb but you know what the word of the lord uh, does not encourage that in fact on the contrary what the word of the lord wants us to have is a soft heart you know, Jesus is a person who has seen many injustices, right? In fact, I, I don't think there's anyone else who has seen more injustice than Jesus and experienced injustice than Jesus. But unlike us who would desire to numb ourselves, Jesus did not do that. In fact, there are two cases in the Bible that we see his raw emotion, specifically crying. No? Uh, the prophet Isaiah said that Jesus would be a man who is uh, uh, acquainted with griefs, you know? a, a, a man of sorrow and acquainted with griefs. And then there's two stories that are you know uh, intricately linked in the sorrows of Jesus and how he felt uh, for the people around him the the more popular one is in John 11 verses 33 to 36 and this is the story when Lazarus died Sabi dito, when Jesus saw her weeping, Mary, and saw the other people wailing with her a deep anger welled up within him and he was deeply troubled where have you put him? he asked them they told him, Lord, come and see Jesus wept. The people who were standing nearby said, See how much he loved him. And so this is Jesus uh, at Lazarus' you know, tomb. And he was crying. And the, the funny thing about that is Jesus knew that Lazarus will rise up again. He knew what he was doing. But he felt tremendous grief. And he was uh, weeping for Lazarus. Another passage where we see that is in Luke chapter 13, verse 34, where Jesus cries out, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones God's messengers, how often have I wanted to gather your children together as a hen protects her chicks beneath her wings, but you wouldn't let me. And so this is Jesus no, sounding like the prophet Habakkuk just crying over Jerusalem, saying, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you know, the city that kills prophets and stones God's messengers. How often I have wanted to gather your children together as a hen protects her chicks beneath her wings, but you wouldn't let me. So imagine Jesus' desire is to protect the city of Jerusalem like a hen would just cover his uh, her chicks, but... Um, the hearts of the people of Jerusalem are so hard and Jesus cries out um, for them and uh, Jesus wanted to protect the nation of Jerusalem because like the prophet Habakkuk says the Lord does not want to see injustice so look at this indictment against Babylon in, in uh, verse 16 no? back in chapter 2 but soon it will be your turn to be disgraced come drink and be exposed look at this drink from the cup of the lord's judgment and all your glory will be turned to shame drink from the cup of the lord's judgment very visceral the lord does not look kindly on people who have very hard hearts and are just desensitized and oppressing other people now think about what god said no he, you will drink the cup of the lord's judgment and you would remember in the Garden of Gethsemane when Jesus was praying and, and, and blood was streaming down no? his, uh, his face. Um, remember his prayer? He said, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. It, and what is he talking about here? The cup. Well, the cup of the Lord's judgment. You know, this is the judgment that the Lord is supposed to pour on people who have just hard hearts and doesn't want to follow Him and just murderous and oppressive. But Jesus says, Lord, if there's any way, if you will it, take this cup away from me, but not my will, but yours be done. And on the cross, Jesus, you know, as He hung there, He said, I am thirsty. And they gave them that filthy, sour wine on that sponge. And when He had taken it, He drank that cup, so to speak. He said, it is finished. 
and then he bowed down and gave up his spirit. That, those are very important word on the, on, words on the cross. It is finished. In the Greek, it's tetelestai. And uh, the imagery there is it is finished. Uh, it is paid in full or it has been all poured out. So imagine this is the cup of God's, God's wrath. And what Jesus did on the cross was to drink it all up so that this cup is empty. So there's no judgment left for you to drink. And Jesus did that for you and for me. And you know what John Stott says? If you look at the love of Jesus manifested on the cross, it's, he says, it takes a hard and stony heart to remain unmoved by a love like that. Let me leave you with this one verse. One last verse and then we'll pray. Ezekiel 36 verse 26 says, And I will give you a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you. And I shall remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. The Lord desires that we would feel, not be numb, not be stony, not be callous, but would feel compassion, would feel empathy towards other people. So much so that like Jesus, we will be sacrificial in serving other people. Today, here's my challenge for you. Everyone who's listening to this cafeteria, regardless of where you are, what time you're hearing this. Guys, today, bawal ang manhead. Can you say that? Bawal ang manhead. You know, we're not allowed to be callous today and desensitized today. Let's join our hearts in prayer. Father, we commit to you this day. Give us a heart of flesh as we look at the people around us. Give us a heart just like yours, filled with compassion. And I pray, Lord, that we would appreciate what you have done for us on the cross. And we would marvel at your gospel and also share it. Lord, would you bless each and every one's day? Would you be glorified? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining me here today. Hope your coffee is still warm. God bless you. See you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.